Hello, everyone. Welcome to our live stream. We have two guests from the Substance Source team and Ronin Mahan, the artist behind our source videos. Nicholas Polak, our head of content creation. Anna Ys, our color, material, and finish designer, as well as Ronin, again, a freelance artist who's joining us here today. So today we will be discussing packaging creation and we'll showcase how 3D tools can complement 2D graphics. You'll discover how to define and design intention, including color and finish palette, patterns, logos, and how to achieve a photorealistic result. So welcome everybody. So glad to have everybody here on the, on the live stream today. Uh, thank you for joining us. Hey. So also for those who haven't seen it yet, we've published an article about packaging goods with an inspiring video. Again, a collaboration between the source team, Anais and Nico with Ronin, CMF designer and 3D visualization uh, of CPG. So let's have a look at the video before moving into the details. Awesome. That was a beautiful video. Amazing, amazing work. So now I'd like to uh, introduce Nicholas, uh, who will explain, uh, he'll go deeper, kind of deep dive in uh, how and why the 3D tools and digital materials are great solutions uh, for creation and visualization of packaging. So uh, Nicholas, when you're ready, uh, take it away and go ahead and start sharing your screen. All right. Thank you very much, Wes. Just checking here, Nicholas. Uh, did uh, were you having a little trouble with the screen share? I'm not sure I see it coming uh, up yet. Yes. Uh, no worries, no worries. Uh, we'll just give it here a second. So just bear with us, everyone. Uh, Nicholas is working through his screen share there. Hello again. I just got kicked out of the of the meeting. No, we have you, Nicholas. I can hear you. There we go. It looks like it's working. Perfect. Out. All right. All Great. Great. Fun. Live streams. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Nicholas, man. Take it away. All right. Perfect. Hello, everyone. And thank you very much, Wes. Um, so, yes, indeed, um, today we'll be speaking about packaging. Um, and through examples of the video, um, uh, we will showcase the design, the texturing, and the visualization of consumer packaging products using Adobe Substance 3D application and parametric materials from our asset library Substance source. Anais and Ronan will explore together the many bridges um, that can be built between 2D and 3D workflows and the opportunities they open for packaging designers in terms of design efficiency, image production quality, productivity, and most importantly, um, creativity in terms of design. And to do this, we design a fictional lineup, lineup of cosmetic and beauty products 
we created a complete range of containers, bottles, together with their boxes, a detailed visual identity, uh, branding together with colors and material stories to cover the main steps of a typical packaging design process. And this is very much a collaborative exercise. Anais, um, the color specialist from the substance source team will first drive you through the initial design phase, which deal with selecting the colors and materials from the library and customizing them to fit with the brand values and identity that she created. Most importantly, she and Ronan will showcase how 2D elements played centric parts to the texturing iterations they made in 3D, converging to a photorealistic result. Texturing steps merge on one side elements traditionally created using 2D solution like branding, logos, text, and patterns together into a three-dimensional representation of the final object, including accurate materials and texture information. It offers a photorealistic preview of the complete design before it is even manufactured. And substance materials enable designers to judge on a critical aspect of product design, which is how the product will be perceived from a color finishes and even a haptic perspective by the users. Designers can, can create details um, the different surface and textures and patterns specific to packaging materials like the grains of papers, plastics and metal foils, to name just a few, to gloss and matte combination re related specifically to printing um, techniques or even process driven surfaces effects like embossing as you see here and waffling, hot stamping and even more complex effects such as vacuum metallizing to just name a few. In the same way, designers produce 2D graphics iteration for logos, icons, te and text composition, 3D tools enables creative to tweak and customize them together with material surfaces in order to produce an even greater amount of variation and proposition in terms of design intention. And this powerful um, design tool set takes a new dimension when we look at applying CMF stories across different typologies of products, materials in their parametric natures allow deep customization to fit with the identity and the product style. This is a significant, a significant time saving through the design process as Substance Source Library offers ready to use materials so that as you will see, um, after Anais and Ronan could really focus on exploring more on the design side and the CMF variation creation. And finally, going beyond product design itself, as they explore the creation of lifestyle images, creating a complete 3D scene staged using Adobe Dimension to build, com to build context around the product and tell a storytelling. And this is just a few opportunities in terms of design that we uh, will show you today as the design um, implication are very, very wide from sustainability and saving resources to um, changes in product, product manufacturing with the possibility to work with um, um, additive manufacturing, for example. But now it's demo time and um, I will hand it over to Ronan and Anais so that they can show all of this live, starting with Anais and the design of the product line. Anais, can you show your screen? Yes. Okay, so... Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, today we are looking into the design of beauty packaging. So I put myself into the shoes of a packaging designer and design the visual identity of a CPG lineup. So now I will show you how to define a design intention from the definition of a complete CMF palette, including color and finish palette, pattern and design of a logo, thanks to 2D graphic design tool, such as Adobe's own Illustrator that is 
of course, established tool to facilitate the creation of packaging. However, Ronan and I we will examine how 3D tools can complement 2D designs, facilitating workflow and boosting efficiency when developing an entire range of products for designer, marketing teams, retailer, and even engineers. So together, we will follow the different steps of CMF process to design and visualize a fictional Sydney lineup. So first, we will extract color, material, finishes, and panel pattern information from the CMF mood board in Illustrator. Then we will create a materials collection thanks to Substance Source. And to finish, we will use Substance Alchemist to drive material presets in order to create a full product range. So let's go. Uh, to start, so on one side, I have already opened Illustrator with a, the CMF brief. So for this live stream, we don't have the entire CMF brief, just a specific part with specific details that we want to focus on. So on the other side, on, on the other side I opened Substance Launcher. Just to remind her, the Substance Launcher is an application that helps manage the Substance Suite install the different software and access to Substance Source. So you just click on the tab Substance Source, and as you can see, Source is an ever-growing content library where you can find high resolution and clickable assets for texturing. So now that my digital tools are open, we can move to the first step, extract color, materials, finishes, pattern information from a mood board made previously. So here you have the mood board. So the mood board is a conceptual aid created to represent an aspiration as well as the look of the product thanks to images and sample. I decided to define an ambience named Surreal Nature. So for the color palette, I chose to work with vegetal green and natural earth stone with strong floral accents. So in order to pay tribute to the spring season. And of course, I added a palette of pleasing color ranging from a cream white to floral tones. And these are combined with rounded and padded and soft shapes. So this will be very useful for the rest of the design pipeline. Then we, the next step, concern how to create a visual style guide for the packaging collection. So this is one of the most essential documents to ensure design consistency through with any related product you create. The logo is an important element of the packaging design. So in this instance, behind the logo of the packaging, my idea is to focus on an ode to botan botanical race. So the typography therefore mixes bold calligraphy with softness and I was inspired by the shape in my mood board. So using uh, Adobe Illustrator, the pattern can be created digitally very rapidly. So here I initially required some vector shapes to create the tie label rounded pinstripe pattern with and with this one in place, I now have the basic repeating units of the pattern. So I used 2D digital tools, such as Illustrator, to guide the visual elements which constitute the packaging. This will allow me to guide Ronan in the realization and the implementation of the visual style guide for the packaging lineup. But sometimes it's hard to realize, to work, and to explain surface and material taste. That's why 3D tools can complement 2D design in that texturing and digital visit visualization provide enormous potential for efficient development and iteration around the packaging. So for the bill of material, I'm talking about the womb. So I, select, I selected a first tract of material, substract from substance source, in order to give me a material design concept. So here you have translucent and gradient materials, textures, surface and paper, shiny effects and all present best possibility for experimentation thanks to Substance Source Material Library. So now I will show you the application of the element mentioned above on a small bottle and a box. So as you can see, using Illustrator has a style guide, the colors of materials, 
and the placement of the logo and pattern is easily applied to each product. Not, however, that this process applies to 2D, to 2D design specifically. So when design is 3D, the palette of material becomes a matrix of infinite possibility and combined combination of the element mentioned above. So for the bill of materials, I choose my material on a substance source, and I will show you how to tweak them and create a collection of material on the tab of the library. You just have to click here and type a word in the search bar. For example, in this case, we need a textures paper. So I wrote the name. And now Substance is searching all the material linked to the world. So you can choose from all materials available. So now to download, download the material, you just have to click on the icon Substance icon. So me, in my case, I'm interested in this material, thick paper, green. So I just click on Substance Alchemist icon and the material is directly sent to the software. So as a CMF designer, this is my favorite tool. Why? Because it's very, very simple interface and very intuitive to modify and suit my personal preference to tweak a material. So I will show you the interface of, of Substance Alchemist. So on the right side, I can easily change the mesh because it's interesting to adapt my material to the shape. So here is the packaging. So I'm going to choose the cube just like that. Then on the low part, this is my collection with my material. And I just have to drag and drop the materials to the 3D viewport to watch it. And just like that. And at the end, on the right side, this is the tweak panel. So I'm just, oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm just uh, going to change uh, the parameters for each material and I will tweak my collection for the packaging. So I'm starting with the paper. And what is interesting is the fact that you, I can adapt it to my CMF needs. So in order to help me, I will directly use my CMF brief to show you how to tweak a material and change that in order to stay close to my CMF brief. So, First, I'm going to change the color. I click here and I click on pick screen color and I can choose my color on my mood board. So for example, if I am interested in this color, I just click on this one. And here I have the good color with the good name and the good uh, reference. Then I can change the roughness. So here, if you want to have a very glossy finish, you can change that. As you can see, it's very shiny. Or I can have something very matte. It depends on what you want. Then I can change the grain intensity. So if I want something with a strong grain, I just change the parameter or not. If I want something very smooth, I can change the fiber lens. I can change also the fiber rotation. I'm just going to zoom there to show you the rotation of the fiber. And if I did zoom, if I want to have um, a crumbed effect, I can change the wrinkle intensity. And as you can see, you have this very crumbed, crumbed effect. So now, if I think my, my preset is over, I just have, need to click on this icon, name, give a name, for example, paper one, save it, and your material appear on your collection. It's very, very simple. So examining material from the point of view of a, of a CMF designer, we can reproduce the condition of the complete design project. I mean, thanks to 3D, I'm able to focus on why such consideration of details are so vitally important in the world of packaging designers. Details such as a logo, 
or the position of a composition, whether or not it is printed or recessed or embossed, whether elements are glossy or matte, and so on. So before, just before I let you with one hand, uh, I would like to show you an example of print that we have on Substance Source. So I'm just going to change the mesh. And I just want to show you the quality of material that we have with this kind of print and the effect. For example, here is a metallic effect, but of course, I can change the size of the text. I can change the text himself. For example, here, the collection name Gleam. I can change the colors as a way you can pick the requisite in your mood board. I can change the roughness. If you want to have something very matte or completely metallic, for example. The fault intensity and of course the fault density. So in order to add more details and more ambiences, I created a second CMF brief to add diversity in the ambience of the packaging. So this second brief is ultramarine skies. Oh, sorry. Yes, this would be better like that. <laughs> yes. So the travel in skies, uh, the idea behind this team is we plunge into the aquatic moon. So from the sea to the sky, so hairy and aquatic blues, unique with sensitive and luminescent pink. Too. The idea is to create a timeless and minimalist world in color, but also in the pattern to have a timeless kind of pattern. So we use the same design process with different CMS steps and the same iteration. So in first in 2D and then in 3D. So to conclude, I just want to say that thanks to Illustrator, Substance Source and Substance Alchemy, it's even easier to develop a common creative language with Ronan. Now I can send to him my CMS brief and my 3D collection to build a lineup of products. So thanks to run and skills, I will visualize concepts with various level of refinement in order to make critical decisions and to test the qualities of the design proposition in terms of the choice of materials, of pattern, color, and finish it through, through the development of the packaging collection. So now I will let show you show you show of, I will let Ronan. Uh, show how to texture packaging and show you the beneficial impact it could have on your CMF day to day work. I think we were going to actually ask some questions at this point, Anais, just to go over some of the great points that you made about your um, CMF package. Yes, actually, I'm taking a look at that and we see if we could take maybe a short break just to go through just a few questions and um, just bear with me for a second, just seeing if we can gather anything. We may just jump right into your session here, Ronan. Yeah, it looks like we're okay with questions so far. Again, uh, we are going to just continue to kind of collect the questions from the chat. So if we, if we do have some, uh, we'll definitely get into those. Uh, but uh, thank you so much, uh, and East. That was an amazing presentation, and thank you very much uh, for sharing uh, your the details and the workflow. So, uh, Ronan, with that said, why don't we just kind of transition over to your section here, and um, we are going to just take a look at uh, what we have. I think we're going to cue a short video to start with that. <laughs> So hello, hello everyone. My name is Ronan Mahan. I'm a freelance 3D artist. Um, 
So I'm going to show you how we go from 2D and a Sizzle 2D document into the world of 3D. So we're going to make um, a little small piece of packaging like this one here. And um, this is the result that we're going to look for. I've got a lot to go through today, so I probably won't um, go through every single step, but this is supposed to give you an idea of how quickly we can work. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to jump into Substance Painter. If you've not used Painter before, it's very like Photoshop. Um, this is the model that I made itself here. I think I actually <laughs> ripped apart my, uh, my partner's cosmetic box just to see how it works. So this is the box we're going to use. Down the bottom here, we've got a nice library of materials. We've got all those lovely patterns that Anise was speaking about that she sent over. And we've got a nice collection to, to get started. So if we come back quickly to Anise's um, CMF brief, from this page here, I can see what colors an ace is going for, as well as what portion she, she wants me to use in the image or even in the video. So this is a great guide for me just to see um, the colors and stuff that she wants to use. Down here, I've got the materials as she mentioned. So she actually sent these over to me in a format that I can use in Painter. These are SPSAR files. They just plug in directly into what I, um, I work with. And so some things, they just don't get lost in translation because I'm using her exact, um, her exact materials that she sends over. Um, from this page again, I can see which pattern she wants to use. We're going to try out some logos and this final um, layout just gives me an idea of how she'd like to um, start the placement and how we, how we should texture this asset. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to move fairly quickly, but the method that um, I'm going to build it is from sort of outside in. I'm going to start with the base materials and layer up any text and fonts and end with any finishes. And that way you get a nice realistic result. So I might start with um, a little bit of paper. I'm just going to th uh, throw the paper on the top of the object here. So I've got this nice uh, cardboard paper. I'm just going to bring up the colors that Anais is talking about as well, just so I've got a nice reference. So I've got some nice uh, cardboard on our packaging. The color is not quite right. So I'm just going to go over here to her preset, switch it to this uh, dark sort of terracotta. This is a bit more in line with the colors that she's using. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a quick fill there. I'm going to call this pattern. I'm going to add a black mask and add a fill and I'm very quickly just going to drop the pattern on top. So now our pattern has been applied to the box. If I change to the split view, so this is 3D and on the right is 2D, you can see how that pattern has been applied. So I can just move that around, scale it up and down, and change the rotation. Um, I can basically place this exactly how I, how I want. So I think something, something like that will work. The next thing is uh, the color isn't what uh, and is specified. So I'm just going to come in here to my base color, pick a color, a bit like what Anise was doing earlier, and pick that pink. So now we've got a nice uh, layer of pink um, pattern over the top. You can see the um, the realism of the materials is coming through. So this is the fiber of the the cardboard or the paper showing through on, on my uh, pattern over the top. I think that's maybe a little bit strong, so I'm coming over to my height map. I'm just going to reduce this. This is a very like Photoshop uh, where you want to reduce the uh, amount of the pattern that's showing through. Let me just uh, tune that down. I believe the cardboard needs to be set to height. Um, Okay, let me just, uh, yes, ah, yes, sorry, I need to change my um, height to replace the height that's there, because we don't want so much of that wrinkle showing through, so I'm going to replace that height and just reduce that down. So now I've got a little bit of the pattern, uh, the grain showing through, but not too much. I've given the pattern a little bit of, um, of an offset there, uh, let's just... Sorry, my window seems to have uh, <laughs> classic. Just going to drop this back on the bottom. Sorry, just bear with me for one moment. I'm just going to reset my uh, UI just because I lost some of my, my uh, options there. Okay, so I'm going to come it's back to my... It's always fun, Ronan, how that kind of <laughs> works out for you when you're trying to mess around, the windows are going everywhere. Yeah, I don't know why this one is, uh, is popped off. No idea. Okay, let's just uh, reduce the height down just a little bit. 
Okay, so we've got our pattern, we've got our color. The next thing we want to add is maybe a bit of text. Again, same process, add a black mask, add a fill. And for our fill, we're gonna just add this text layer here. So now we've got some text on there. This is just some text that I prepared earlier. Um, so it's nice, but I want to add maybe um, a black color, color to the material. So I'm gonna switch that to a little uh, plastic uh, microgreen uh, material. So you can see these are layering up, but um, I don't really want to see um, the text uh, affected so much by the underlying layer. So I'm gonna change that to replace as well. And I'm going to give that uh, a little bit of uh, height offset. Okay, so we've got um, a little bit of uh, punch or embossing to our text and we've got some uh, color to it. You can see there the pattern is not quite right. So I'm just gonna come back into my pattern, back into my fill, and just move that down a little bit. Okay, so we have done text and pattern. The last thing we wanna do is a logo. So I'm just gonna add another layer called logo. I'm gonna add this to a group because I'm gonna do a little bit more to this one. It's a bit like Photoshop. You wanna keep nice groups and organization and keep it within a group. So on this logo, the same process we've had before, we're just gonna add a, a black mask with a, a fill and we're just gonna drop our logo in here. If I come back to my uh, split 3D, 2D view, you can see my logo has just been projected over the entire box. I'm just gonna scale that down, put it in the position that um, an ace would like to use. And I'm just gonna turn off the repeating of the, the tiling. So that's very like Photoshop or any other uh, 2D illustration program you've used. You just place the logo where you want to. Again, we're, we're seeing a bit too much pattern coming through from, from underneath. Um, instead, this time, I'm going to um, separate out the, the punch or the, the structure of the height into a, into a separate layer, uh, which is this one here. And I'm just gonna give it a, a bit of height uh, like that. And again, set him to replace. And so he's uh, replacing what's what's underneath again. So we're layering all our, um, our various pieces um, easily. Now, um, for this um, height, I'm going to do something a bit different. I'm going to reference another um, mask uh, so I can control all this from one place. So if I go back to my logo, I'm just going to add an anchor point. And then back in here, instead of using the logo as a fill, I'm going to actually use that anchor point as a fill. And I'm just going to select this one. Okay, so now I'm using this underlying layer as a reference for, for, for this top layer, which is doing the, um, the, the, the embossing. So why would I do that? Um, I'll show you now. I'm just going to Blur this layer and add a gradient curve. And what this does is it interprets um, the gradient that I just created by, by blurring, allows me to do lots of different effects now with this, um, with this layer, but I'm still referencing that underlying mask. So if I just have a look, quick look at what's happening to that mask, this was my original mask from below, this is my logo, then I'm blurring it a little bit and doing a gradient curve. I mean, it sounds all very technical, but if I go into that gradient curve, now I can start to play with how that's affecting the emboss. So I can do all sorts of um, uh, procedural, if you like, uh, changes to this. Let's just change the logo color to the color that NAs would like me to use, which was, I believe it was this nice accent color here. So let's change that to that. Again, I'm just color picking. So here's my height. I'm doing a little bit of punch. And I'm playing with this um, this parametric or procedural um, curve here just to, to drive what it's actually doing to the to the packaging itself. So in that way, you can just get lots of different types of effects for that um, embossing. Maybe you want debossing. Um, I think I'll go with something something a bit like this. Again, I can control this uh, the the material of this logo all from here. So if we wanted a bit uh, shinier. Or, or rougher, depending on what um, an ACES brief is. Finally, on the back, um, we've got some text, 
but it's a bit hard to read because uh, the pattern's a bit, um, it's, it's layering up on top. But these are the sort of things you realize once you start to apply a nascent brief to 3D um, objects, you know, um, we start to see issues and think about uh, solutions to them. So for the pattern, I'm gonna add another fill and I'm just gonna put, type in here a square. And again, that just um, projects a square onto where my um, marquee is. So if I turn off the repeat, you can see here, I'm starting to make space for, for what we're trying to read on the back. And again, like all of the, um, the options here, they're parametric, so I can adjust balance and, and play with how that looks. But for now, I'm just gonna make a nice square and draw it, uh, draw it over what I want to make legible, if you like. And probably at the top there, I might have left some space for a logo. Okay, so um, very quickly we've um, textured this asset. We've added a logo, and um, I might at this point make a little quick IRA render for for Elise and send it over to her. It'll have a higher quality image for her to give feedback on. And perhaps she says to me, "Oh, Ronan, that looks great. Can we see the other logo?" And now it's just very quick to iterate at this point because we've set up um, our little system, we've set up our series of layers, and I can just start to swap in what I want into this layer. It starts to um, reference everything that I've built already. So now I can even um, drop in a text uh, layer if you like. So if I just bring up the font size just a little bit. So now we've got a text layer. I can type in here whatever I want. This is logo whatever your logo is. I think we use Gleam in the end. Um, I can also change fonts. And they sent me over some fonts to use. Through Substance Designer, I can uh, export those fonts for using Painter. So I can just switch between them if we want to use them. And I think an ace in the end, we end with uh, the, the G just because it was, it was nice and simple. It respected her, um, her brief, uh, follow the curves, fit with the shapes. Um, so, I think we ended up, ended up with the G in the end, which was uh, this one here. And I'll just scale him up a little bit. Okay, so that's very similar to the result I showed you at the start. What if um, an ace wants to me to do a different brief, a bit like what she talked about earlier there. Uh, I'm just going to bring that back over again. Next, we're going to do the ultramarine skies that uh, Anais talked about, which is a completely different treatment of the packaging. It's got a different set of colors. It's got um, different materials to be used, different patterns, uh, a different rule set, a whole, a whole different look. So we're going to very quickly uh, do that version now. And now it's just as easy as just duplicating this this group, which was the uh, the first surreal nature. This is going to be called this was called the version two or variant two. And I'm just going to uh, turn off the various layers just to bring us back to our our base uh, our, our base raw uh, cardboard packaging. Instead of the cardboard, we're going to use some paper. This one here. I'm going to increase the tiling I'm going to use the normal version of that uh, maybe maybe this grain is just a little bit too strong in your face maybe uh, Anise gave me a little bit of feedback on that one I'm going to switch over to normal and reduce that opacity that layer down a bit uh, make it a bit more refined and I believe we went for a nice uh, let me just oh, swap over my this is the colors for ultramarine sky and I'm going to use this nice sort of ivory off-white here for the base uh, cardboard paper. Next is my pattern. We've got our old pattern from before. We're just going to come down to where, uh, where our pattern lives. Drag in the other pattern. That just goes straight over the top. I'm going to adjust where that pattern is on the, the box itself. Turn off the tiling on that one. Okay, so maybe it sort of sits somewhere like this. Again, from seeing it in 3D, you start to realize issues or where, where you might want your pattern to repeat or not, or where an ace might, might need to change um, her design um, brief just because how it actually ends up applying to the object itself. I'm gonna change my color to that lovely deep navy color that we had here. 
put the text back in. I believe we used um, white for the text instead for this one. So I'm just going to change my color here to sort of a white. It's more about um, relief on this one, about um, embossing the, the text more than anything. And finally, we've got our logo. So instead of the G, I believe we used last source instead. I'm just dragging uh, this logo back in on top and roughly placing it here. So we liked the, the fine elements of this logo. I felt we felt like it um, it worked well with the fine and angular shapes here, but it's obviously not very legible when they <laughs> the two of them sit on top of each other. So first, let's change the color to one that we're going to use here, which is this nice sort of light blue. And finally, I'm just going to duplicate this layer, and instead of the logo, I'm going to put in um, a circle. These are all included, all these shapes and masks and stuff. There's, there's a ton of them there in, in the library itself. So I'm going to use this circle. And let's just scale that a little bit. And change the color maybe to the dark navy. And just put it below that layer. So now we've got uh, the logo sitting on top. We've got a bit more contrast. Um, I'm not happy with this pattern showing through from underneath. So again, we're going to come into our height setting to replace what's going on below. So now he starts to sit over the top. And the embossing of this text is probably a little bit um, soft compared to the size of what we did before. So if we come back to our logo, um, where's my logo here? We got a logo, oh, yes, the height there. I'm just going to reduce down the softening effect. And um, maybe we even, Maybe we don't emboss it, maybe we deboss it. So sit it, sit it down in, um, into the surface instead. So while I've been working way there, the back is sort of just did itself really. It just um, followed the rules, if you like, that we had set up beforehand. So very quickly there, we've got two, two different variations um, in no time at all. Um, so you can see how quick that, that process is. Um, now we're going to quickly jump into uh, Dimension. And I had not used Dimension before this project, but it's a great way to um, see more than one object at once. So now we're going to see two or three objects together. You can start to, to judge how the collection works together rather than um, in Painter, we're, we're kind of in isolation, I guess. We're, we're judging one um, asset. We haven't got any sort of other reference points. So if I jump back to Dimension, here I am in dimension. I've got my three different color variations. I'm just going to drop in the, the last um, asset that I need. Handy little thing about dimension is it just takes all of the textures and everything with you. So once I've exported from Painter, it just um, brings everything together. So I can sit in here in Painter, uh, sorry, in dimension. I can change the lighting that I'm using. If I'm doing studio lighting, maybe I want to do a sort of a hero shot. You know, I can quickly change the background color to, um, you know, something that's been, uh, let's change this, sorry, the background environment. Yes, I can change the, the background color to a color that Anais wants to use in her um, mood board. And um, you can also, if I jump over here, have a look from above you can start to create some interesting scenes so let's see let's create a little studio light let's put in a sunlight and sort of rotate that around a little bit i'm going to come up here to the sun increase the cloudiness and this will just um soften fall off of that that light itself here um i'll probably reduce the shadow opacity a little bit and you can see here I'm using the render preview, though, so the, the quality just keeps improving. So now I can start to see the objects working together. Um, I can even drop in some quick backdrops, like let's put a little sort of fabric backdrop to it, maybe. Uh, let's reduce up down. Bring it over a little bit down. You've got a, a library of materials to use here as well, so uh, maybe I'll drop some polyester on there and change the scaling to 
and load by return as well. So very quickly, I can start to see them as a family working together or not, do the shapes work together, how do the colors work. Um, we're getting a, a more complete picture. We can send this off to an ACE for, for review. We can start to think about the family of, of what, what other materials should go with this. Should there be any fabric? Should the, what's the packaging like that these sit within? Um, you can even do some fun things like, I'm just gonna throw maybe some splashes on here. Maybe you're starting to think of some great ways of maybe marketing this, this product. So let me just scale it down a little bit. And I'm gonna use some nice water here. I was playing that earlier. Move this back down. Okay, so maybe I want to um, sell the fact that it's sort of hydrating. I'm thinking about how to uh, things that I want to do in the video that's showing this off. Um, so very quickly in dimension, we can um, start playing with ideas for. Uh, how the packaging looks, how does the font work together, what are we trying to say about the product, is it smooth peeling, is the water involved, you know, you, you sort of, your imagination can go wild at that point. Um, so now we're going to cut back to the video and see a little bit more of a slice of uh, what we did for the video. So with my presentation, we've started with a single asset. We've talked about one variation. We've worked that through. We've added more variations. We started to see the products together as a family. Um, these are all important things just because the whole process is a bit fluid. You know, I, I'm in Germany and Ace is in Paris. I can send her uh, real time what I'm doing. She can say, oh, you know, change the logo, maybe this pattern instead, let's swap it out. And very quickly we iterate and get to um, place where we're happy with 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 the look and that it fulfills her brief she's happy with the materials and they look um, realistic and in a, a realistic setting so through the course of um, these videos we've had to do a lot of assets and a few a few expert tips and tricks i guess for for what i've learned along the way um with my previous example we sort of we made layers and we made masks and we sort of built it up in a linear fashion and I realized um, at some points you want to make big uh, artistic direction changes, you know, maybe we want to change the logo or like we said, or the pattern or something. And when the, the layers are all individually stacked, it becomes a little bit difficult to manage that on a global scale. So one little thing or tip that I learned as I, as I made it, the assets, instead what I would do was I would start out by purely working in black and white and set up my masks beforehand. And it looks a bit like this. So I've got my logo, I've got the various bits on there that I want. I've got my text and stuff that I can edit later. And I'm just blocking out the shapes that I need. Maybe there's a label or something that I want there. Um, so I just work in black and white initially. And then I reference those uh, masks, I call them master masks, if you like, just using angle points. So now this version one, it's, um, it's using the same uh, masks just to achieve the, the look that it has. Version two is the same, three and four. And where that starts to become powerful is say, okay, and Ace again says, or, or, or Nicholas says, you know, positioning of the logo is not great. Let's just shift that up to here for some reason, make it twice the size, I'm much happier with that for whatever reason. Um, and all I have to do is affect that base mask. And you can see now all of my different variations have, have changed based on what I did with that initial base mask. It's not just a perfect um, reference as well. I'm actually changing what's happening to those masks in the, the later layers. So here, you know, I'm doing uh, different kinds of deboss effects. If I come back into this 
to this logo and, and play again with the gradient curves or whatever, uh, or change how I'm actually um, affecting the logo, if you like. So it's it's not just a one-to-one -one, uh, perfect reference. It's even more powerful than that. It, you can stack these effects on top of each other, and then very quickly, you know, I can export out that object again and say somebody wants to have gold or whatever on the lettering, that's no problem. It's, it's literally the press of a button, so I can drag gold on there instead, you know. It's so quick to, to iterate at that point because you've built um, a nice structure to work with. So that would be my one tip, I guess, would be work initially uh, in black and white, you know, lay out your, your, your um, package design or layout or logos and stuff and then reference that later in Painter and, and you can harness the power. You can output, you know, here we, we, we started to output eight and 10 different variations in no time because everything's been driven by that nice layer structure. Um, once we're done with um, variations and picking out what which versions we're going to use, we start to introduce more materials. Here we have soft organic shapes. We're using the substance source atlases here, and they're just simply put on uh, simple planes. And this, again, starts to reinforce the bigger picture of what is this packaging? Who is it for? What do we expect you to feel and want? And you're just getting a much uh, rounder picture of, do I need to go back and make some early design changes? Does Denise need to think of some different shapes? Does she need to send me some more materials? And we can work in parallel. You know, I don't have to wait for her to, to, to catch up. We can work in parallel. I can just drop those in at any time. So again, here we're using more of those little uh, nature leaves and shapes. There's lots of, there's hundreds of them in the library. Um, and now we can start to see how the family works together. Maybe we'll bring in some fabrics, Maybe she'll send me some tissues and stuff to use. And, and finally, we have a nice sort of rounded picture, um, a family of really nice cosmetics that um, look realistic and are fun to work on and for, fun to iterate the design on. So um, yeah, I think we're just going to have one last look at, um, at the video just to see some more of what we ended up doing uh, with all those products. That is awesome. Thank you so much, Ronan. That was such a great live demo. And thank you for walking us through that, man. Really, really appreciate it. Um, so actually, we can move into our, our Q&A session. So we have been um, getting a list of questions here uh, from our chats. We have Vincent and Marine uh, from the Substance team who are also uh, have been monitoring the chat. So uh, why don't we just dive into a few of these questions that we have here? Um, so let's say, I'll take it from the top, I guess. Uh, so the first one was asking about the font. Uh, was that geometry mesh or an alpha? Um, so the font in Painter was just um, an alpha. Actually, the font in Painter was actually a text. It's a special type of layer, so you can type like any kind of text layer in Photoshop. So I can type, you saw me type in the logo and stuff. Later on in the video, I believe most of the time it was just just normal map, so that's just giving me the information. If I ever need to really punch it out and we need to see silhouette, I'll just output the height map of Painter and use that in whatever program you want your your rendering in. Just use that as a displacement map, and that'll actually give you, you know, actual relief like tessellate displacement. So most of the time, I was just purely using textures and normal maps and using that editable um, text layer in in Painter. Oh, awesome, awesome. Uh, so this one, this was a question just saying, very new to this, and then just asking, what is a black mask, I guess, in, in the picture, so. <laughs> Sorry, like I said, I, I sort of went quite quickly there, so I wanted to show the range of what we could do. A black mask, just like in, in Photoshop, is a mask that's filled black, as in, you can't see anything yet until I add something white in there. Now, I was saying fill because I was filling it with a pattern. So that's just me filling with a white pattern that Anais has sent to, sent to me just as an image. And so I'm starting with black and then I'm filling with white. So I could paint on there. I wanted to show you maybe painting or gradients or something. I just ran out of time a little bit. But a black mask is just a mask over your layer that stops you seeing that layer until you add white to it. 
And so how, how do I get patterns out of Illustrator to Painter? Can I just import them directly? Um, depends. I mean, I, and I think Anais sent me um, JPEGs or TGAs or flat, flattened PNGs. I can just drop those straight into, that's what I ended up doing. I just drop those straight into Painter as resources to be used. Yeah, exactly. So right now, like you have Illustrator files. Um, I mean, we're not importing in uh, the actual like um, the the actual like Illustrator file itself or, or any of the vector work. It's just going to be like a, basically like a merge down image that you're importing in as a resource. So with Painter, you can import um, any type of texture resource map, whether it be JPEG, PNG, or whatever. So that that's kind of the yeah. process as, as of today. So they were uh, they were sent to me as as vectors. Uh, by any so I had infinite resolution I just break them down to uh, 2k or 4k depending on, on what I needed for if I wanted to get really close I just did a 4k texture from it and use that as an alpha oh awesome awesome uh, so this question here is asking uh, how the reference cards uh, stay on top of a substance painter uh, it says uh, painter doesn't take the focus and cover it is it something in substance painter I am missing uh, I guess it's do you mean where like that. Oh, yes, how I had yeah. an Ace's lovely uh, mood yeah. uh, colors on top. That's just a separate yeah. program. Um, I believe it's called Pure F that just floats over the top. It was just an always on top sort of thing. But what I do actually end up usually doing, that was just for demo purposes. I sort of end up building up um, a little swatch of her colors that I can pick color pick directly from in, in Painter instead. But you can do it both ways. You can either float something over the top or have it on a different window and just color pick from there because Painter can use any window. I've got three monitors here so I can color pick from anywhere, basically. Yeah, that, that's an awesome application. I actually just uh, posted the link in our chat. So yeah, t totally, totally a great application to use. Uh, all right, so let's see here. Uh, this one, I, I guess I can answer this one. This, can I do some basic animation with Substance Painter? And uh, the answer is no, not, not at this time. We can't do that. Um, and this one's, uh, can you talk about your approach uh, when deciding shots and transitions in your product presentation videos? Um, so usually as part of the brief as well, we'll have a, an overall guideline for where we want to go, what, what do we want to see? Nicholas and Anais will prepare that, you know, they'll say, oh, we want to talk about architecture, we want to see these facades. Um, they'll also supply some music, and a lot of that just kind of inspires me. I listen to what they're saying, what they want to see. I tend to make uh, and look at the, the materials initially, listen to the music, get a sense for the vibe and the mood. And then I just block out in very big chunks initially, you know, oh, the first third of the video is about architecture, the second third is about this. And I just kind of slowly narrow my way down, try and find the, the main key shots. I won't really move the camera or anything. And then uh, slowly blend and transition from there, I guess. The music helps a lot and talking to Anais and, and Nicola help a lot just to understand what they want you to feel or what they're trying to say with the materials. Some weird magic in between, I don't know, yeah. after that. That's awesome. Uh, so it's the next one is, uh, are, uh, are any of the people involved interested in doing a detailed tutorial series on this project? Would love to see more details on using designer, matching real life paper, et cetera. That's a great idea. I mean, I guess, I guess Nicholas, <laughs> yeah, on maybe that. we could, you know, yeah, we could talk about that. Uh, and Anissa, it'd be, maybe it'd be really cool uh, for, for you to have something we could write up on Academy or something. But uh, yeah, Ronan, I don't know if you have a, a, a channel, your, your own specific channel. Do you do your I own? I mean, I have, I have a YouTube channel and stuff. I'm just so busy sort of making things and, you know, working with various people. It's hard to find time to do tutorials. I try and share it in small amounts. It just feels like sometimes I, I want to say it in the most perfect, understandable way, but you know, you probably know yourself, it takes a lot of time to really distill that down and, and, and give people enough time to understand what you're saying. So I find it a bit difficult to find the time to do that, but on my social media or to, uh, YouTube or Twitter, or whatever, I tend to push out what I can, little thoughts or, or things like that where I can. Maybe when I get a bit more time on my hands, I can sit down and try and make it digestible and, and interesting. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure many people would want to see it. Uh, so th this other question here is asking about the model is, is, is a, I guess they're asking a model is a, a stock model on any of your libraries or did you model it specifically for this project? So that box I modeled myself for the project, like I said, I, I tore apart uh, 
a piece of uh, one of our cosmetic cosmetics in the in the in the the bathroom just to see how it's folded because you saw in the animations it unfolds and that realism is is important you know and Ace and, and Nicholas said here we want to make this kind of a cardboard box and I just found the closest thing here some of the other models were actually provided by the source team um, I believe that um, squeezy two bottle was perhaps some of them were based on Nicholas's own designs as well so either I modeled them or Nicholas modeled them. Some of the stuff you saw in Dimension were just stock models. So the cloth, there's plenty of splashes and fun things to just drop in in Dimension. So that's when you can start to build your scene very quickly. That's what I liked about Dimension. You know, I hadn't used it before. It's just very quick, quick to rapidly prototype and see that family of objects together. So Dimension is quite good for that, just, just to throw things at it and see what sticks basically. Otherwise, yeah, it's just model something simple yourself or find a stock model or something. Yeah, great. Um, so, so the next one was asking, like, in uh, the rendering uh, of this presentation, they were making a mention that it's very fast. Is that because the presenter is using a fast computer or the rendering engine fast? I'm not sure what you mean by rendering. Do you mean the, the videos or what I was showing? Um... Uh, I, I'm thinking it means the dimension section that you had. Yes. Um, Yes, my machine is fairly fast. Um, sort of invest in yourself. Uh, it's a i9 10900K and I'm using the RTX 3090, which is amazing, by the way. It just makes everything just so fast. Even Painter, all the bakers in Painter, they just like instant. I remember having to sit there, maybe wait for a couple of minutes for something super quick. So yes, the machine is quite fast. I purposely made it for this kind of real-time work. Um, so everything is very quick. but. I think to mention, you know, that preview mode, it sort of iterates anyway, so it builds up in quality quite quickly. So what you saw there on my machine, you know, took a couple of seconds and it just keeps iterating. Um, yeah. But technology seems to be at such a quick pace, you know, so, you know, a couple of years ago, all this stuff would be not really feasible. Now it's all real time. That video that you saw is real time as well. So no more long waiting for rendering, rendering or anything, which is the power of the substance materials as well. They're all re real time materials, you know, they're all PBR. So um, yes, yes, my machine is fairly fast, um, but not crazy, you know. Uh, and th this was a, a, a section here. It was just asking about missing the anchor point section. They were asking if they could see it again. Um, I, um, I don't think we have time to do a screenshot, um, but I will say that uh, yeah, th this, uh, this is recorded and it will be uh, just able to watch on our channel on demand right after. Uh, but uh, Rona, I just wanted to give you a moment. Like, uh, is there any specific thing that you would want to mention about using anchor points? The one thing to remember about anchor points is they're super powerful and awesome, but you need yeah. to have the anchor point below whatever you want to affect in the stack. So a layer above for it to reference an anchor point, the anchor point needs to be below. That's why I started with black and white on that example. I built up my masks, dropped the anchor points on at that point so that later on, however many layers later I do it, I can just say, hey, look back at that original mask. And it goes, oh yeah, there it is, drops it on. If the anchor point is the other way around and above your um, layer, you can't reference it. So that's the only thing about anchor points, but it's like, um, yeah, it, it's probably one of the more um, complicated things to learn in Painter, but once you get it, it just sort of it clicks and it's really powerful. Oh yeah, de definitely uh, second that. I mean, like, um, yeah, so if you're new, it's a little bit of a complex, you know, you know, a feature to wrap your head around, but once you use it, man, you'll use it like every project. I use it like yeah. all constantly and you'll find all these ways of like, oh, you know, the, the biggest thing is, is just a way to like link data in the stack, you know, like link one piece of information to another layer. And once you can do that, the complexity of, of, of blending you can build is really cool. So definitely worth checking out. Um, this next question is asking if it's possible to build, uh, I guess in substance, a 3D model. Uh, hey, Nicholas, maybe you would like to talk about that. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's not, uh, it's not possible at the moment uh, into substance. Um, so the, the, the models that we used for the video uh, this time were modeled in other applications. Um, and um, more interestingly, um, the, the previous video that we, uh, uh, that we created, we um, uh, alternate the, the ways that we create um, 3D models. 
um, especially to fit with the, um, uh, the actual industrial design process, which is relying on specific tools and, um, and understand you know, the, the, the challenges that everybody for in, the, in the design chain and the creative chain faces to, um, to get this done. So um, it's, it's actually live testing you know, how designers work uh, through the collaboration that we have all together with Ronan and NACE. Awesome. And, and we do have uh, some stuff coming down the pipe as well. If you look back on our YouTube channel, we, we had a, uh, a, a video that kind of showcased some things that we're working on. So, uh, you know, just check our YouTube channel. We've got some surprises uh, that you can, you can check out with that. Um, so this next question is asking, how, how did you export your design uh, to Dimension? Is it, uh, or is it copy and paste? Uh, so I went from Painter to Dimension, and it's literally one of the export presets. Once I'm done with all the texturing that you saw there, you hit Export Textures, select the Dimension preset. That outputs an FBX file, or sorry, an OBJ file, which is the mesh, and all your textures and an MDL file, I believe. You just drag and drop that OBJ file, which is the mesh itself, plunk it on your screen, and it appears magically with all the textures, everything applied. It's just really nice. So many programs where you like, you have to slowly couple it together piece by piece. So there's really nice integration with Dimension, just export from Painter, drag and drop into Dimension and it's there all applied, every material set up correctly. Awesome, yeah, super easy to do. Um, so the next question was asking if substance is compatible, compa excuse me, compatible, I can't say the word compatible with Blender 3D. So it's been a weird day for me. Um, so yeah, I'll take this one really quick. So uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, all of the substance tools will work with Blender. Uh, I use Blender like as my main app all the time. So it, it works pretty well. Um, one of the things I'll say, like if you're exporting from Substance Painter, like you can just export like your, your, your metal rough channel. You can also create your own specific, like, like you may not see like a blender preset, I don't think from Substance Painter, but if you, uh, you can just make your own or you can just export the metal rough channels and it, it works great. Uh, another thing I will say is that um, in one of our showcase videos we had about, you know, kind of the state of 3D with substance, uh, that's why I was talking about <laughs> checking that out. We had some nice little surprises in there. Uh, we also showcased uh, a Blender integration that we're working on. Uh, that's coming along super well. Uh, I was actually able to play with that yesterday, so it's it, that's coming along great. Uh, also, do want to uh, give a, a shout out. We have uh, Emmanuel's in our chat. I always see him here. So, hey, man, uh, good to see you. Uh, he makes a fantastic uh, Blender plugin uh, where he, he uh, it actually works across various applications. And of course, he has a send to from Painter. So I definitely recommend checking out uh, his work and his channel. And um, and I think we can probably, Vincent might post a, a link to that in the chat, if he, if he Vincent, if he hears me. Uh, but anyways, that's, a, that's another great solution as well. Uh, so moving on, actually another question just popped in here. This one's asking about uh, what is the process you're using to define a color theme? Mm. You want to start, Nicola? <laughs> I think we are best suited for to do uh, to answer yeah, that yeah. question. Yeah. That okay. Good. Uh, to define a color palette, that's the question. It's right. Um, so to define a color palette, so um, for me, uh, I started to define um, a mood board. I mean, to to to, to I research different kind of. Uh, images uh, or samples from everywhere I can find it. I mean, on website, uh, outside in the street, or in the museum, or in the um, in the if I, in my environment in general. And then I started to create a mood board. I mean, I mean to to combine different kind of images, and then I start to have a kind of color palette and ambiences and. From this point, I started to extract the color, and then I tried to create um, a color palette and try to work with the intensity of each color. I mean, this is very important to work with the proportion of each one in order to have the right color palette uh, in linked to the mood ball that I've made before. So yes, this is how I work. <laughs> awesome! Thank you so much. You, um, you well. You would want to see my cut. You would want to see my colors if, if an ace wasn't there. <laughs> We'd be having neons and everything. So you know, all the images. You know, that's all of their color thought. All the process has gone in is what goes all the way through to give us that lovely sparkly result at the end. 
And there's an important part at the very beginning of the design process because colors is not a separate part of the design. It, it, you know, it travels around many different things such as products, shapes and typologies. And, uh, and the way we define the ambiences and the color palettes at the very beginning is just to um, um, uh, showcase the different values that we want to convey through the products. If the products is performing a certain, um, uh, a certain job or a certain um, uh, feature, but also um, uh, what is the, the context around it? Is it something that um, aims to um, uh, showcase sustainability or you know, uh, quality or performance? Or, uh, and, and this will drive heavily our choices, not only of colors, but uh, uh, also of materials and finishes that we use throughout the, um, the design. Awesome, thank, thank you, Nicholas, for that, for that clarification. Um, so, so everyone, I think we will pretty much close out the Q&A there. There's just one last question I just kind of wanted to open up for, for everyone here. And they were just asking, do you have any tips for beginners, people totally new? Is, uh, maybe we could do a quick, like, have, have, have you guys just give a quick tip to uh, new users out there? Why don't we start with you, Ronan? Um, for me, it would just be experimenting and trying these things. A lot of this software is either free or you can get trials and things like that. It's just through trial and error. You'll never get it right the first time. That's how I learned, I think, and kind of mainly self-taught. Self um, just playing with bashing stuff together, bashing 3D scenes together. That's how I started. I think you made some cityscapes or something like that. Um, there's plenty of free resources. There's lots of great communities online now. So that would be a great way to start, I would find. Thank you. Thank you. Anais, do you have any tips? Um, I would say approximately the same thing I remember. The idea is to try and retry, and sometimes it's working, sometimes it's not, and to continue and to follow the, the different uh, helper uh, on the different website that we have already have on YouTube and other. <laughs> Great, thank yes. you. And uh, Nicholas, do you have any tips? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I will completely follow what was just said by Anais and Rona, and I would just add to uh, to this that uh, it's better to start with something and to learn from what is existing. Um, it's a it's a great way to understand how things are made, and um, and uh, and on Substance Source you can find some free materials that you can understand how to create them by looking at um, uh, some stuff that is already done and to uh, drive some techniques and and tips and tricks from uh, from learning from this content and to create your own after that so it's, it's a great way to start awesome thank you guys all so much that, that's just great uh so that'll be it for our live stream today so i just uh definitely want to thank uh ronan uh and anise uh nico for being here today uh it was awesome to see your presentations it's always inspiring uh, especially want to say thank you to Ronan as our special guest for being here. And then also, uh, Nico and Anise, it was awesome. I, I love having members of the Substance team on the live streams. I mean, you guys are all heroes to me. I, just everything you guys do is just it's awesome. So it's it's really cool. And I think it's awesome for, you know, the, you know, people who are using the tools and who are learning just to kind of see, you know, how things work behind the scenes here at, here at Substance. So that's that's awesome that you guys took the time to be here today. Um, yeah, it was great. And just uh, as we close, do you guys have any last words that you want to share? I guess that sounds bad to say last words, but <laughs> how about any closing statement for the live stream? Thanks to you, Wes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think uh, I think it's just a um, testament to the software and to Substance themselves, you know, how just two or three people, you know, we can put together videos and ideas like that very quickly. So. I, yeah, I also want to say thanks to all the source team. I use all the materials all the time. You know, don't give enough credit to them. Um, I often open up their materials a bit like you're saying and just, how, how on earth does that work? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, awesome set of tools. I love them. Yeah, the uh, the source team is actually quite amazing. Um, it, I've I've had the honor to be able to work with with them with with you guys, you know, lately a bit more, and it's been really cool. The whole team. I hope I don't not sure if they're watching, but also special shout out to all the source team uh, back at back at work and uh, all the stuff they do. It's it's quite magical. Um, okay, guys. Well, I guess that'll be it. So one thing I do want to say is uh, just just a reminder to anyone watching that uh, just want to uh, plug our next live stream. Uh, so that'll be with uh, Coral uh, Cornelis. 
uh, and it'll be a stylized character art in Substance Painter. And uh, she'll showcase her workflow for creating the character Anna from the comic book Mal Gretu uh, by Jordi Lefebvre. And so thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, stay tuned for the next webinar and uh, stay safe. And we'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you.